Yeah, I'm always worried about that. It's probably top on my worry list. No, dude. I'm not worried about online privacy. No, everything we hear about identity theft and you know, mm-hmm. losing you know, your credit rating and stuff like that is, are very kind of real uh, concerns. Yeah, it concerns me, man. The government, man, they know what you're doing. They know everything, man. They got their fingers in everything. They're looking at your Facebook, looking at your phone calls. They got everything, man. Are you an organ donor? Privacy is a thing of the past. It's never coming back. Kiss it goodbye. It's over. No one would have believed in the early years of the 21st century that our world was being watched by intelligences greater than our own. That as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they observed and studied. The FBI rates identity theft as the number one online scam in the state. Floridians lost $28 million last year alone to ID theft. I filed my taxes through my accountant electronically, and it got rejected twice. Their tax returns had been filed by a thief. While nothing can guarantee that you won't become an identity theft victim, protecting your social security number by giving it out only when necessary and being on guard when using the Internet are critical. Uh, I don't know what it says. I have no idea. I, I, don't th- I don't think it says... I don't think it says anything except for my name, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. I just don't know who's viewing it, and it could be some creepy person, you never know. I share a decent amount of information, but you know, I only allow people that I'm friends with or I know to access my information. Like, it tends to be a general, pretty high level of ignorance around how information is used and collected and by whom and, and who actually has access to it. Um, I was just reading a news article the other day, some researchers at the University of British Columbia created a, like a bot, like a, a program that would automatically go and just send friend requests on Facebook to random people. Um, and they found a high percentage of people, especially youth, were willing to just kind of friend to harass them. And from that they were able to collect all sorts of private data, which they went and destroyed for ethical reasons, but I mean just kind of showing that people don't really think about this a whole lot. Cyber crooks have a new target, Facebook. A lot of- An emerging trend, hackers targeting Facebook profiles as a way to scam money from people. It changed to, Brian is in urgent need of help, all caps, multiple ex- exclamation points. I guess is the way the scammer set the table for reaching out individually to my friends. The story was, I'm stuck here in London, I was on vacation at a resort, we were held up at gunpoint, and now I have no way to get back home, please send money. This scam we're talking about here is really quite a bit more sophisticated than that. In this case, someone actually hijacked Brian's actual Facebook account, his proper Facebook account, which meant not only did he look like Brian uh, when he posted that note saying, I'm in, I'm in trouble, I need help, but he was able to send emails. The scammer, the imposter, was able to send emails to all of Brian's friends, which he did one at a time, and in one case even followed up with a phone call mm. and said, I've been held up at gunpoint, please send me money. One of his friends did wow. actually ultimately send $1,200 to London. He's out the money now. Tips to avoid getting hacked on Facebook. 1. Be suspicious of anyone, even friends, who ask for money. 2. Don't use the same password for all web accounts. And 3. Have more than one contact email address. Usually, when you make a purchase online, your information is recorded in a database. If that database were to be exposed to a cyber attack, your sensitive data could be utilized to the will of the hacker. In 2008, most major retailers experienced a 161% increase in attempted hackings on their networks. Almost anything can be digitized nowadays, and even online baking is not safe. Hackers are coming up with even more creative ways to get their hands on your information. Among them are phishing schemes that duplicate bank websites and ask customers to log on to their accounts. Others send emails, purportedly from bank employees, asking for sensitive financial information. How effective are these plots? Well, it's hard to pinpoint an exact number because of how difficult it is to pinpoint the source of where these attacks occur. 
Some experts say that about $3.2 billion were lost to phishing attacks in 2007, with about 3.6 million people losing money to these attacks over 12 months. Yeah, but it screwed up my computer pretty bad. I mean, they could have, I guess, looked at anything that was on there if they really wanted to. There are many different types of malicious programs called viruses which can invade your privacy and steal your information. Viruses are dangerous because they can self-replicate and infect every program on your computer. One such virus is called a Trojan horse. These programs can get onto your computer undetected and steal your saved online passwords and usernames to things like your email or online banking account. They can also record your every keystroke in order to determine your passwords and even your credit card number. Trojans can come disguised as a friendly email attachment, so make sure to only open attached files from trusted friends. Another type of computer virus is called spyware, and it monitors your activity while logged onto your computer. Spyware will analyze your web surfing hab habits and send that information to an online database. There are some viruses that are purely destructive, whose aim is only to cripple your operating system, but the majority of computer viruses are privacy-invasive information stealers. A general trend that I see is that increasingly, you know, we exist in databases, right, mm -hmm. where we have different types of numbers, social security, um, you know, what other kind of data kind of connected to us, you know, as identifying markers. And I guess the fact that we don't know where our information is, how it's being used, and by who owns it, and what they're allowed or not allowed to do with it, let alone what they actually are doing with it, mm -hmm. is, I think, what the problem is. Not, right. it's the fact that we don't know how much we should be putting out there. Um, I think also um, that the more information we do provide, whether that's, you know, birth date or, uh, taste information about you know, TV shows like on Facebook or stuff like that, that increasingly then what happens is that as, as people and as citizens, right, we fall into this logic of a website like Facebook, which reduces us to simply consumers, right? And I guess it depends how you can, you know, construe risk, what, what counts as danger and what doesn't. Um, is, it, is it dangerous that we all kind of get recruited into this corporate model of citizenship? Um, in the big picture, I guess, you know, you have people uh, um, protesting in cities across the country who are essentially saying, yes, it is dangerous that these things are risky, that, the, you know, that the ways the, this information is being used aren't necessarily kind of malicious and that they're not trying to, like, steal our identities or, you know, take money out of our bank accounts, um, but that, it, that they end up kind of promoting lifestyles and ways of kind of organizing society that benefit, you know, mm -hmm. a pretty small sliver of the population. <laughs>